Coding is a very unique craft. It's a fusion of technical skill and creative vision. And like a master craftsman, a skilled coder weaves together their ideas and their skills to create something that is both functional and beautiful. Poetry aside, here's the thing. I didn't start coding because I wanted to be a programmer. I learned to code because I wanted to make iPhone apps. I started by picking up Learn C on the Mac and then I moved on to Learn Objective C on the Mac. And for a while, it was amazing. The thrill of creating something new and the satisfaction of seeing my ideas come to life. It wasn't like anything I had experienced ever before. This was even before university. But as time went by, something happened. Coding became my job. And don't get me wrong, I love my job. But it's not the same as it used to be. The excitement and the thrill have mostly faded away and it's replaced by heart requirements and deadlines. And I know I'm not alone in feeling like this. So the question is, how do we make coding fun again? How do we recapture that sense of wonder and excitement that drew us to coding in the first place? That's what we're gonna explore in this video. It's kind of ironic how you often hear that following your heart is bad career advice. But when it comes to coding, it might just be the key to unlocking your full potential. Coding is more fun when you work on something that you care about, that solves a problem or that just expresses your creativity. When you choose to work on stuff that you're passionate about, you're way more likely to enjoy the process and to feel proud of the outcome. Of course, sometimes you don't get to choose your own projects, especially if you're working for someone else. In that case, you might feel like you're coding for a purpose that is not your own or that you're not using your full potential or creativity. However, that doesn't mean that you have to completely give up on your true coding interests. You can always pursue your passion projects on the side as a hobby or as a learning opportunity, even as a portfolio builder. You never know, you might even be able to turn your passion projects into your main project someday if you also manage to find the right audience or market for them. Back in school, some of the projects that I had to work on were really, really boring. You know, networks, databases, compilers, etc. Don't get me wrong, these are important topics and they are useful for building a solid foundation but they're not exactly the most exciting or creative things to do with code. So I decided to use my free time to work on something that I was really passionate about, something that would make me happy and proud of the code I write. And that's how I came up with the idea of making an iOS game, a game that would be simple, fun, and addictive, and more importantly, that would showcase my skills and creativity as a coder. There's a really good reason why video games have checkpoints. They represent small victories and motivate you to keep playing and progressing towards the end. This same principle can be applied to coding. By breaking down a project into smaller, more manageable pieces, you set yourself up for success, make it easier to achieve those goals, and stay motivated. This makes the whole project more achievable and enjoyable as you celebrate small victories along the way. Software projects can seem daunting and it's easy to feel overwhelmed and not know where to start. I generally try to keep things as simple as possible. Break down the first three to five tasks that are manageable enough to accomplish in a day. As I start working on those, I start creating tasks for the bits of work that I identify along the way. Kind of like putting together a puzzle. You generally start with the edges and you work your way towards the center. I would be very scared if you do otherwise. When I was working on my game project, I didn't just start coding right away. I had to plan the game logic, such as the rules, the goals, the obstacles, and the rewards of the game. Then I had to design the graphics, such as the little penguin, the backgrounds, and the animations. And then I had to code the functionality, such as how to move the penguin, how to detect collisions, how to score points, and how to end the game. Even when the whole project was fairly daunting, accomplishing each of those smaller tasks gave me a dopamine boost and kept me going. Coding can be very lonely and frustrating when you don't have anyone to guide you or support you or inspire you. You might feel like you're stuck in a bubble or that you have to figure out everything for yourself. And depending on what kind of project you work on, you don't always get something really tangible to share with the world, such as with backend development. When I was working on my iOS game, I didn't just rely on my knowledge or skills because they were fairly limited. I used a ton of online resources and communities to learn and get help. I watched tutorials and courses on YouTube and Udemy to learn how to use SpriteKit with Objective-C, uh, the tools I needed to make the game. I started to learn about game design and game logic and game mechanics. I browsed forums like Stack Overflow and even posted some questions on my own, which I rarely find myself doing these days. But most importantly, I shared what I was building with friends and family. I saw as they were competing to get high scores and sharing what I had created on social media. From that moment on, I knew I was hooked. 
and it's the kind of feeling that I'm trying to bring back to my life when coding. In today's world, you can find a lot of like-minded people on online platforms like Twitter, Reddit, TikTok, or YouTube, and trying to establish connections with others, sharing what you're building in public and paying attention to what others are building. Establishing a sense of belonging can go a long way towards reigniting that initial spark you found in code. Coding can be very boring and limiting when you use the same tools and languages over and over again. You might feel stuck in a rut or miss out on new opportunities and possibilities. You might also lose your interest or curiosity in coding and feel like you're not learning enough or challenging yourself. Of course, sometimes you have to use certain tools or languages, especially if you're working on a specific project or platform or environment. That can make you feel like you're constrained by the limitations and requirements of these tools and languages, or that you're just not using your full potential or creativity like we mentioned at the beginning. You can still probably find ways to incorporate variety into your workflow. You can try new tools like AI-assisted coding or learn script automations for your project. It's still code you're writing, but it's not constrained by the language or platform your product runs on. For example, when I was working on this game, I used SpriteKit as my framework for creating 2D graphics and animations for the game. But I also played around with other frameworks like Cocos 2D and Unity, which have different capabilities and advantages for making games. I also used Objective-C as my language of choice, but soon after I released the game, Swift itself was released. So I used the game I'd built as an excuse to learn Swift and attempt a migration. Coding can be fun and exciting when you challenge yourself to do something new or difficult. What we're trying to do here is trying to spark that motivation and curiosity that we get when we explore new possibilities or solve new problems or just learn new skills. You might also feel satisfied and accomplished when you overcome a challenge or achieve a goal or master a skill. Of course, sometimes you might feel intimidated or frustrated by challenges. I know I have. Sometimes they are objectively a bit too complex or too time consuming. And uh, you might prefer to stick with what you know, like it's, it's a lot easier to stay within your comfort zone. I found that this is where you need to catch yourself. While we tend to avoid it, we do find more fulfillment when we're expanding our comfort zone. And you can always find ways to challenge yourself in a fun and manageable way. You can always be picky with the challenges you choose. You can go with the ones that merely interest you or that suit your level or that even just fit your schedule. The way you challenge yourself doesn't have to be strictly within the realm of coding. Again, going back to my game, I didn't just follow tutorials or copy the examples. I also challenged myself to try to understand the thing that's been blocking me and try to write the code myself to solve it. For example, I had to learn Photoshop to create the pixel game sprites and textures themselves. And while I now realize I made a lot of questionable design choices, I decided to make some elements like the ice blocks of a translucent realistic material. So I learned Cinema 4D to render those textures out. Finding ways to challenge yourself in the realm of software will help you learn skills and gain confidence. You will also enjoy the process and the outcome of coding more and feel more fulfilled and rewarded. Reigniting your love for code is only half the battle towards a fulfilling career in tech. There are so many things I wish I knew before joining that I recently decided to make a full video about them. So feel free to go watch that next if you have some time. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.